All right, so where I left, I can always check my stage, right? Because you get interrupted in your workflow with animation. So by having it in two places, you can always see where you were, what part of the story. So now I'm moving the hat down a little bit more. I just need to make sure I only have the layers on that, that make that transformation possible. And then I check it, and this is almost right, but I have to be keenly eagle-eyed to see the difference here. And I need to turn off that monocle. And it's there and it's there. So that from here to here, it's fully covered. Okay, now I'm going to select all the layers by holding down shift. Then I'm going to hold down option and say image, not image, layer, merge layers. Then I'm going to select all. Then I'm going to copy. Then I'm going to click on the stage, paste it in. Then I'm going to hit command S to save it. I check it. That's what I want. Simple, effective movements. And then deselect and delete. Now I need to go one deeper. So I turn on the other assets. Let me see. Yeah, I think that's all three of them then. And now we're fully covering it up. And now this becomes the next layer. Now, if I'm honest, I could skip this step because I have that layer right here. I could just duplicate it and then move it on up. But make sure it's truly the same. And it is. Right. So then I can, I just duplicated that. That's why it says layer seven copy right there. Because that's, that's a layer I can keep returning to. And that's why on this frame I made a little star. Because I'm going to basically return back to this frame three different times in this animation for each time it reveals. But you can see I, can, I have all the assets. I can rebuild it at any time. Okay, so the next one, let's save it there, is when the hat gets revealed again, There it is. Uh, the mustache is going to have more bites taken out of it and more. I want to have little flames like someone's burning it. So let me turn these off so I can see that. And now let me duplicate that mustache. And now let me bite away from it some more. My little circles. start trimming the tips because I have that drop shadow now as part of it. It's good. Remember, subtlety is a pretty uh, wasted enterprise for GIF animations. So try to make your transformation really clear and visible. Mm -hmm. You can add anything. Yeah, you can even draw and paint and you can composite in anything you need. Yep, you're fully equipped to do that. I think it's fun to composite things that are different styles, which is kind of why I did those hands the way I did. But yeah, anything you want. I'm doing something more photorealistic in the morning class using my, my creature and my setting, but in some ways it's just not as interesting. 
because the changes aren't as graphic and as clear. So lots and lots of additional cutouts here. Keeps getting nibbled. All right, now. I have to find some asset for flames, or I could build it, I could build it with shape tools, but I can always go to Pixabay and look for flame. But I don't want all images, I want illustrations. I want it to look a little different, and I'm going to skip past the stock images from iStock. I'm going to see, I just want a really basic little flame that I can flicker because it's just the size of a, mus of a mustache. So this one looks pretty good. They have seem to have stopped. I've noticed this with some websites. And this is just recent, this semester, where I can right click and open link in new tab, which is a little annoying. So if you notice that, you're not alone. I'm gonna download it. Because then I have to go back to get to my search results. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, you could always. Well, if you're doing that, you're saving this thumbnail image. So you're not able to save the full size image that way. That's why I always want you to see it there. I did allow me to open a link in a new tab then. That's why I want you to go to this page so you can control the download size. Now for a GIF animation, it's screen resolution anyway. That small thumbnail size might be big enough. But yeah, just remember, just like with using Google Images, you wanna, you wanna always look at the image page so you can see it full size. Yeah, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Can I take a, the to Yep, you could take it as a vector. It would be an SVG file and you can drag that into PhotoP the same way. But there's really no advantage to it because for an animation, we have to rasterize it anyway. So this comes in as a smart object, even if this were a vector. We'll be learning more about vectors. What I'm going to want to do is rasterize it so that I can shrink it down and get rid of that red background using Magic Wand, you know, practicing all of these compositing skills that we've learned. Oh, and I had a feather on, so since it's really clean and graphic, I need to turn that three pixel feather off my magic wand. Zero pixel feather. And then it will cut out nice and cleanly. Yeah, but it is nice that we can, can also save vector files from Pixabay. All right, so now with my GIF animation, Kind of at the top here, I want to start adding these different types of flames. So I'm going to have this little flame just flickering at this edge. And I'm going to give it a drop shadow. So I'm going to mark this, let's see what color, as orange. This flame. And I'm going to double click on it and turn on the effects just like we did with the shape tools in exercise two. And I'm going to add a drop shadow, right? But this time I'm going to make that drop shadow a lot darker because it will make it kind of smudgy behind and a little bit bigger. So it really sets off the idea of that flame. Uh, 
So I'll put it right there. And then I can also add to the effects a glow. And I'm going to do an outer glow. Now what's great about this is it will affect all the layers underneath. And I can decide how opaque I want it. Make it pretty subtle. And I'm going to give it a little bit of jitter and a little bit of noise. Just because I like that. All right. I can also play with the coloring, right? Whenever you, and with every other aspect of these pixels. So I'm going to transform it a little bit, maybe warp it, stretch it. I could use puppet warp, but regular warp works just fine. And I'm going to play with the coloring a little bit with my image adjustments. Just go right to hue saturation and just shift it a little bit more towards the yellows. Okay, so that's one flame. Now I want to bring in the other flame too. Comes in as a new layer. This one's already been cut out. I don't need this one at all. But I need to rasterize it first. I'm going to mark this as red. Those are my two fires right next to each other. Now I'm going to shrink it down. And this is going to be once the fire kind of really takes hold. see where should this be maybe right on this lip here okay and then I'm going to warp it a little and what I love about layer styles is not only can you turn them on and off but you can also copy them from layer to layer so now I'm going to take the layer style from this, go to layer style, copy it, and I'm going to paste it onto this new one. So I still have, I have that same glow and that same shadow behind it. Okay, so now this is my next frame. But I'm obviously missing some things. If I do command zero and go to my stage, I can't go right from that to that. That doesn't make any sense. So I have to turn on those components as it starts to get revealed. Yes, okay. So select them all, hold down shift, hold down option, layer, merge layers. Command A, Command C, go to my stage, Command V. Okay, so my next frame. Now the reason I'm using not just the cutouts, but also the flames, is the flames are a dynamic aspect. We talked about static and dynamic in, in character work. And so the flames unfortunately need to change every time if they feel as flat as the holes punched out of the of the mustache then we're going to kind of lose the impact of the animation so this flame now i'm going to do a duplicate of and i need to warp it or change it and this is a really nice trick for fire so i don't need a duplicate of that one i need a duplicate of this one the red one to just do free transform, and then to just flip it horizontally. So it flickers back and forth. And then I might rotate it slightly, and I might play with its warp as well. But it, because I did a duplicate, it's going to keep its original. So let me just show you what that does to the flame. So now it's, it's just kind of curling away there. I might also start to darken the mustache layer. 